Hey there, people. So today I bring to you my complete mage loadout guide. This is start to finish the best magic class builds, the specific armors and accessories on all platforms, uh, all versions 1.3 and 1.2.4 equivalent, uh, from pre hard mode all the way to Moon Lord, what's available on console, mobile, PC, and so on. Uh, to simplify this one a little bit, I'm only going to get get into general recommendations and info for weapons. I'm not going to be as specific on the stats and info for weapons as I have been in some other guides because I've already done a whole series of magic weapon guides just recently uh, to get into all those specifics. So links in the description to some of my other videos for uh, those specifics on the weapons and detailed guides on other subjects. Uh, when I say pre-update, I'm talking about 3DS all last gen consoles and for now the mobile version uh, which should be getting the update soon so the updated platforms otherwise uh, for now the updated platforms are PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Uh, the Switch version, when it comes out, will have the update. Uh, so let's get another thing out of the way. The best modifier for most magic weapons is Mythical, except for those that have no knockback. Uh, Ruthless is an alternative to Mythical for uh, maximizing damage output at a higher mana cost. Uh, there are some weapons that have very low mana costs, and in those cases, sometimes Godly or Masterful is better. And for those with no knockback, uh, usually it's demonic or mystic. I'll mention a few of those along the way, but just keep in mind for most of them it's going to be mythical. So let's start with pre-hard mode. So early in the game, the uh, wood and ore based armors are not class specific, of course. So my recommendation, as always, get to at least silver or tungsten tier armor. Uh, it's very optional whether you want to go to gold or platinum and particularly for magic because you do have some other uh, armors that are specific for the mage class fairly early on. So on the updated platforms and only on the updated platforms, the first weapon you can get for uh, that's a magic weapon, the earliest weapon you're likely to get is the Wand of Sparking. Uh, this is only on the updated platforms. It's not super useful, but it does have that ability to light enemies on fire, so uh, it's worth mentioning. It's a little fun. Um, but otherwise, on all platforms, you can craft the gem-based staffs relatively early. You'll need 10 metal bars from various ores and 8 gems at an anvil. And of course, you'll need an anvil. Um, there's certain combinations, though. Copper and amethyst you can make with... 10 copper bars and 8 amethyst gems. Uh, you can combine tin bars and topaz gems, silver bars and sapphire gems, tungsten bars and emerald gems, gold and ruby. Uh, and the best of all of them is the diamond staff, which is made with platinum bars and uh, diamonds. <laughs> 10 platinum bars and 8 diamonds. It's the same number for all of those. There is also a special one on the updated platforms made out of uh, sturdy fossils and amethyst uh, if I recall correctly but I'm not even going to get into that um, and otherwise uh, this is basically going to be your your sort of basic your um, craftable ore and gem based staffs are sort of your starting point for weapons uh, with the magic class uh, you'll also want to get some general you know movement accessories like you know the Hermes boots or sailfish boots whatever uh, and of course, when you get the chance, get some rocket boots, uh, combine those together and so on, get your grappling hook, your mounts and so on. Um, but in terms of magic specific stuff, you're going to want to keep an eye out for the traveling merchant, unless you're on 3DS, which doesn't have the traveling merchant and doesn't have this item. But uh, keep an eye out for the traveling merchant because he'll sell the celestial magnet. And for magic users, this is one thing you can get, you know, whenever your traveling merchant shows up um, that is very useful. It increases the pickup range for mana stars. Now this one's got the arcane modifier, so it gives it a little extra mana as well. Um, but generally the, the use for this is to increase your pickup range for mana stars, and that's one of the first things that are possible to get specific in terms of accessories for uh, magic users. Now another thing on the updated platforms, you can also get the shark tooth necklace. This is not specific uh, for magic, but in pre-hard mode it is very useful no matter what class you play. As you can see, increases armor penetration by 5. Again, that's only available on the updated platforms, um, whereas the uh, Celestial Magnet is on all platforms. Uh, but on the updated platforms, you get this from Blood Moons, uh, from the Dripplers and the Blood Zombies. 
and it's basically a chance, so you'll have to kill a lot of them. <laughs> Eventually you'll get one though, and it is very useful for uh, effectively reducing your enemy's defense. What it does is uh, ignores five enemy defense, which means your attacks do 2.5, or you know it gets rounded to two or three extra damage on all of your attacks, essentially. Um, and another thing you're going to want to do as a magic user early on is to break either a shadow orb or a crimson heart as soon as possible uh, because there is a chance uh, in corruption worlds you break the shadow heart uh, you have a chance to get either a vile thorn or a band of star power both very useful vile thorn is a weapon of course and it stabs through walls and everything and as you can see it can score a lot of hits so that's a very useful weapon uh, if you're in a corruption world the band of star power is very very useful um, basically it, um, actually I didn't even note this down. As I recall, it, uh, gives you some mana back when you get damaged. So, uh, it will become more useful later when you can combine it with some other items as well. If you're in a crimson world, on the other hand, unfortunately you don't get those. Um, except on mobile, you can find the band of star power in living trees, uh, the big giant living wood trees as well. Um, 3DS and the current mobile version that will probably change on mobile when it gets the update. Uh, 3DS it's not getting the update so that's going to stay the same but you can find the band of star power that way in uh, both Corruption and Crimson Worlds but on most platforms you can only get that band of star power in Corruption Worlds. In Crimson Worlds though you can get the Crimson Rod and this is a very useful uh, weapon. It's not uh, sort of general offense, but you get this by uh, breaking Crimson Hearts. It's a chance each time. And uh, this is your little rain on the parade weapon. Um, can be useful, you know, against invasions and just to like cause an, a little extra damage to uh, whatever um, enemy you might be fighting. So it's, uh, it's a useful thing to have and you can actually use it through a fair bit of the game. Um, just to provide a little bit of extra damage and in some cases it's going to be particularly useful. But um, of course keep in mind that breaking three shadow orbs or crimson hearts or a combination as I find out <laughs> will summon a boss, uh, the respective boss of the biome you're in, whether it's uh, corruption, eater of worlds, crimson, uh, brain of Cthulhu. So you may not want to break three of them right away but you can break one. Uh, I would say break one the first day if you don't get what you want. Uh, break another one the second day and the reason for that is um, breaking one begins the chance of getting a meteorite landing and that chance is greater the first night after you break one so I say break one the first night if you don't get your meteorite or the item you want break another one the second night you might want to wait on the third one because of that boss fight situation uh, but there you go and uh, yeah, the meteorite is um, very useful as well. There, there are two chances or two. Um, I'm probably gonna want to. Can I skip this? No, I've used it too recently. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna need to pause for a sec and come back. <laughs> okay, we survived the night and thankfully no solar eclipse today. But uh, <laughs> that did give me a chance to check, and uh, I can correct myself now that actually the band of star power simply increases your mana by 20. So I was actually wrong about that. Sorry. Um, what I was about to say was that you have two choices for mage specific armor in pre hard mode and those are jungle or meteorite. So there are advantages and disadvantages to each but I would say they're sort of vaguely fairly equivalent. Uh, the jungle set uh, and also the ancient cobalt set uh, which you can get randomly dropped as well. They're actually interchangeable even the pieces are interchangeable so you can use jungle pieces with ancient cobalt pieces. They're effectively the same. Um, they just look different, but uh, they give you an extra 80 mana in your mana pool, 16% uh, mana cost reduction for your weapons and so on, and an extra 12% bonus magical critical strike chance. So for the jungle uh, set, uh, you'll need a total of 32 jungle spores, 12 or 10 stingers depending if you're pre or post update and two vines and you make that at your anvil. Now that's going to involve, it's a nice set but it involves lots of hunting deep in the jungle for uh, those components. So unless you're spending a lot of time in the jungle anyway, I would say it's probably easier in my opinion to get the meteorite set if, again this is a bit of an if as well, uh, if you get one of those meteorites to land um, after you've smashed a shadow orb or a crimson heart or two. Uh, then in that case the meteorite is probably easier because actually you can mine meteorite with 
explosives. Uh, grenades or dynamite is probably the easiest and fastest method to mine the meteorite and uh, that way reduce your encounters with those meteor head guys that are pretty annoying. Anyway, the meteorite set um, gives you a boost of 21% magic damage, uh, which is a big damage boost, and it also gives you the space gun free to use. Um, as long as you're using the meteorite armor, you can craft the space gun from meteorite bars as well, and you can use it for free, no mana cost, it won't drain your mana. Um, so you can say, you know, the jungle armor has some arguably better stat boosts, but then you get a free space gun with the meteorite armor and it's got a big damage boost. Uh, the defense value is almost the same. Uh, it's 17 for jungle and uh, 16 for meteorite, so uh, no big difference there. Uh, meteorite set requires either 60 or 45 meteorite bars, whether you're pre-update or with, if you're on one of the updated platforms, that's where it's 45. Um, and then you'll need another 30 or 20, again, pre and post update for the space gun. Um, if you're pre update, you'll also need uh, two fallen stars in that mix to craft the space gun as well. So, uh, again, I would say it's probably easier to get a meteorite set. Um, I used to be a big fan of getting the jungle set, and then I realized that it's kind of a pain <laughs> to go down into the jungle that early in the game and get everything you need. So, I find meteorites just easier, uh, but your preference really choice might depend on how much you like that space gun and or how much you really need that extra mana from the jungle set. Uh, but if you are in the jungle and while in the jungle, whether it's then or later, keep an eye out for little blue flowers, uh, which you can harvest for nature's gift. Um, they don't, the flowers in the jungle don't look quite like this, but they're the same, you know, color. Um, and it's little flowers that actually you can harvest with a pickaxe or a weapon and you get nature's gift. And that is an important uh, magic accessory as well. As you can see, 6% reduced mana usage. And that can be combined a little later as well. So let's get... Uh, into those combinations. Once you defeat a goblin invasion and get your goblin tinkerer, you can then buy the tinkerer's workshop. That's uh, this thing down here. And uh, you can then start combining some of your accessories into uh, more powerful accessories and also just combining the effect uh, so that they use le fewer accessory slots and uh, you still get you know number of boosts this is going to become more important as you go through the game but one of those things that you can make is your magic cuffs so first of all um you have your band of star power for perhaps i don't actually have one here because i already used it for this purpose uh, but if you have a band of star power and a band of regeneration you can go to your tinkers workshop combine those into um a mana regeneration band so interesting thing about that it gives you the extra uh, 20 mana that the band of star power gives you and then it converts the health regeneration from the band of regeneration into mana regeneration effectively so that combined weapon gives you the extra 20 mana plus helps regenerate your mana um, so that's very useful and then if you take that mana regeneration um, band and then combine it with a shackle that's where you get these magic cuffs and that's the one actually that restores uh, mana when you are damaged. It retains that effect of increasing your maximum mana by 20 and then when you get damaged uh, you get basically a little boost of mana there as well. So um, definitely pre-hard mode that's very useful. It can remain useful even into hard mode ways depending what other accessories you have. And uh, also another thing you can do, you can use that nature's gift, combine it with just a regular mana potion and make a mana flower. Um, and that's also, of course, at that Tinkerer's Workshop. Now, this is kind of optional. Um, there's a couple optional things you can do here, actually. So the Mana Flower is kind of optional. As you can see, 8% reduced mana usage is better than the Nature's Gift alone. And it will automatically use mana potions when needed, which is great, right? And sounds great. The problem is, uh, of course, if you use too many mana potions, you get the Mana Sickness debuff, which decreases your damage output and the thing about being a mage is being a mage you have low defense and high damage so reducing that damage output kind of messes up your whole plan um, so this is sort of optional there are situations where you might want to use it in situations where you might not um, but we'll equip that for now and uh, 
you know what, let's throw on the jungle set just to go with the jungle theme there. And the other optional sort of thing you can do here, um, your magic cuffs, which, you know, there were a few items you combined to get the magic cuffs. You can also combine them with the celestial magnet to make celestial cuffs, which combines the effects of those two things. The only downside to that is that you actually lose that extra 20 mana. Um, so you still have the restoring mana when damaged and you have the increased pickup range, but you lose that extra 20 mana. Um, and the thing is that you can combine this celestial magnet with something else later in the game. So it's kind of up to you whether you want to combine them now and have that little, um, you know, you don't really necessarily need the extra slots right now. So you might not need to combine those yet. Um, and you may not want to do it because later you can combine that with something else and retain all of those effects. So uh, we'll talk about that a little more later. But um, again, in terms of accessories, and if you do uh, have, obviously, um, you know, there's no point. Um, I forget, actually, I, I meant to note whether these stack, the nature's gift and the mana flower. Um, but... Uh, if you're in a corruption world uh, and you have a free slot, you may, if you're playing on expert, which of course you can only do on the update platforms, when you defeat the uh, eater of worlds on expert, you get a worm scarf item, which could be very useful uh, even for a magic player at this stage of the game. Keep that in mind. And also, um, getting back to weapons, of course, we talked about the space gun. Pew, pew, pew. Um, it is, you can see it pierces two and uh, and hits a third, so it's a useful weapon for sure. Uh, but it's not super powerful. Uh, you may want to consider fighting the queen bee, uh, especially in expert mode, but even if you're not in expert mode, you might want to fight the queen bee before Skeletron. Um, in expert, that's going to be really important because Skeletron is really tough in expert mode. And uh, the bee gun, uh, as well as bee nades can actually be very useful against expert Skeletron particularly. But this bee gun from the Queen Bee is generally just excellent for Skeletron and for uh, the Wall of Flesh later on. As a magic player, it is magic damage, so you'll get a little boost uh, from your other stats there as well. Um, that's actually one where uh, either the critical strike from the jungle set or the just overall uh, damage boost from the meteor armor is going to help that stat as well. Uh, and in expert mode, again, you can, you also get the hive pack from the queen bee, which will boost this further. So uh, definitely a bee gun is going to be a, a good option. Um, when you do defeat Skeletron, you can also get the book of skulls. Um, this is a pretty powerful weapon. The only problem is it's fairly slow. As you can see, um, it can score... I think it's three hits in total. It's interesting, actually. It moves so slowly, it's hitting one dummy twice and then hitting the, the second one. Um, so it's a fairly, fairly powerful weapon, but moves very slow. So it depends what you're fighting, how useful that's going to be. Uh, very useful weapon, actually, is the Water Bolt. And you can get this before fighting Skeletron. If you're lucky, uh, you can find this in the entrance to the dungeon. It's just going to be sitting on a bookshelf. Um, the weapon icon is red, but the book on the shelf is blue. So, uh, strangely enough, uh, but if you look through the books and don't go below zero before you defeat Skeletron, you might be lucky enough to find this before uh, delving into the dungeon after defeating Skeletron, but otherwise you can find it later. It is actually very useful. Um, again, it is likewise very slow, but it reflects off of things, it bounces, and in an enclosed space it's going to be really powerful. Also, if you uh, fire it upwards, um, it's actually going to score extra hits. It will reflect off ceilings and stuff. And so that actually can be, despite its relatively low damage value, it can be very powerful in the right situation. Uh, Magic Missile is also from the dungeon. You will have to defeat Skeletron to get this. Because you're going to find that in those um, locked dungeon crates. It's a controllable, uh, basically a guided missile. <laughs> Very useful uh, weapon, but um, not super powerful. The Aqua Scepter, uh, lower damage. Well, this is also a damaged one, but uh, lower uh, base damage. But again, it is a piercing weapon and it arcs. So that can be useful um, definitely in some situations as well. Can be quite a powerful uh, weapon too. Now, once you get down into the underworld, you get some of the most powerful magic weapons in pre-hard mode. The Flame Lash, uh, which is basically an upgraded version of that magic missile. Guided Fireball instead of a uh, vague energy orb. And this one can light people on fire, as you 
can see there. Definitely a much higher uh, damage value. Flower of Fire, which basically just throws fireballs, um, has a very high base damage. But uh, that arcing thing might be a problem for you, depending on the situation. Uh, can be good, can be bad. So it's slightly more powerful, but a little more difficult to use. And the Demon Scythe. Actually, this is a very powerful weapon, even though it has a lower uh, base value. When used right, this can score a lot of hits, because you can see it starts off slow, and then starts accelerating. And actually, this is one of the most powerful weapons to use against the Wall of Flesh. So um, that's basically it for pre-hard mode gear, so to speak. Um, the best options when you get as far as the Wall of Flesh fight are going to be your Water Bolt, your B Gun, and your Demon Scythe. Of course, uh, B Nades can also be very useful. Uh, and those are kind of going to be your, your go-to items for a Magic user. I'm actually going to swap into my uh, Jungle set again here. And I'm going to show you some of this in action against the Eye of Cthulhu. So I'll be right back with that. All right, here we go. It is nighttime, and let's bring him out. Eye of Cthulhu, Eye of Cthulhu, where you at? There we are. So there's your basic. You know, you can certainly use your basic uh, staffs against such an early boss. And you know, it's totally possible to get um, the meteorite armor even before you fight this guy, by the way. Uh, so, you know, space gun is going to be enough against him, but you're probably going to want to uh, use something a little more powerful. You can see the bees, that continual damage uh, is going to be very, very handy. Uh, the Book of Skulls. See the issues there <laughs> where, you know, it is powerful, but it's not fast. Aqua Scepter scores a few hits. Actually, that was the Water Bolt, sorry. Aqua Scepter does also, though. Uh, Flame Lash. I didn't bring in the Magic Missile just because it's kind of the same idea. Uh, you get the idea, though. Pretty powerful. Lights them on fire. Uh, this also... Flower of Fire, same idea again. Uh, Demon Scythe, well, he's almost dead now, but... Should finish him off pretty easy. There we go. So that's your pre-hard mode weapons uh, against a pre-hard mode boss, and we'll be right back with hard mode. Okay, so here we are talking about hard mode. So first of all, uh, the first things that you can get for a magic user in hard mode are things that actually drop from the Wall of Flesh. So... Uh, one of the most important things is the Sorcerer Emblem in terms of accessories. Uh, as you can see, it gives you 15% increased magic damage, and that is a 1 in 6 or 7 chance drop, depending if you're pre or post update, uh, to get that from the Wall of Flesh. Uh, it gives you that 15% increased magic damage. It is definitely worth farming the Wall of Flesh for if you don't get it the first time. Just keep killing them until you do uh, because you're going to want that Sorcerer Emblem for sure. Another thing that the Wall of Flesh can drop is the Laser Rifle and it's the same chance exactly, 1 in 6 or 7. And it's essentially an upgraded version of the Space Gun without the free mana. You can see uh, it does the same thing, just fires faster and does more damage. So that is uh, certainly worth getting as well. Um, now, if you're on the pre-update platforms, one more thing you can already get at this stage is the Avenger emblem. Uh, by combining, there are three uh, emblems, the Sorcerer, Melee, and Ranger uh, emblems that are on the pre-update platforms. If you combine all three, you can get the Avenger emblem at this stage. Uh, if you're on the updated platforms, you have to get it a little later after defeating all three of the mechanical bosses. You'll need uh, five of each of their souls, the souls of Sight, Might, and Fright, and uh, one of any of the emblems. Uh, there are actually four because they added one for summoners as well on the updated platform. So any one of those, you might have one you don't plan to use uh, with the five of each soul once you've defeated all three mechanical bosses on the updated platforms. Either way, um, the Avenger emblem gives you a 12% boost to all damage types, and... Um, what you can do at this stage, if you're on anything other than 3DS, um, you can combine this Celestial Magnet that I was talking about earlier and saying you can combine you can combine this Celestial Magnet with the Magic Cuffs, but this is the place where instead you're actually a little better off 
combining, keeping that celestial magnet for this, and then combining it with the uh, Avenger emblem to make the celestial emblem. And the reason for that, um, as I said, the Avenger emblem gives you that 12% increased damage. Celestial magnet increases your range for uh, picking up mana stars. Celestial Emblem instead boosts that to 15% increased magic damage only and has that pickup range increase. So then you can actually have both of these and you can keep that extra 20 mana I was talking about in pre-hard mode uh, that you get from just having the magic cuffs. So uh, that's optional, but um, definitely a good way to go. Uh, again, on pre-update platforms, you can do this from the beginning of hard mode. Um, updated you can only get that Avenger emblem and do this after you defeated all three mechanical bosses but um, there are of course other general purpose accessories you may want to get uh, once you're in hard mode I've uh, thrown on a pair of wings these are actually very these are end game wings actually but um, you will want to get some wings once you're in hard mode and uh, you may also want to start farming and gathering all the ingredients to get the onk charm or the onk shield um, again pre post update that's a very useful item as well, not magic specific, but good to have. Uh, so keep that in mind. And otherwise, uh, there's also the matter of reforging. Uh, you will want to reforge all of your accessories, which I have not done at all. You'll notice they all have modifiers, right? So that's what the violent, armored, menacing, and intrepid, those sorts of things mean. Uh, you can go to your goblin tinkerer, reforge your weapons, your items, your accessories. Um, and as far as your accessories, there's a debate, of course, uh, whether you want to reforge them to warding, which is the best for defense, which is uh, plus four points defense per accessory, or menacing, which is what I often go with, which is plus four percent damage. And as a magic player, personally, this is my opinion, I know some people are going to want that warding to maximize their damage, because think about it, you've got five accessories times an extra four, that's an extra 20 defense. I get that. That's definitely important because, you know, magic users do die relatively easily. But as a magic user, your setup is low defense and high damage output. So for me, I would maximize uh, the damage, again, five times 4% extra damage and an extra 20% damage, that's a big boost. And your sort of role is really to try to kill things before they get to you. So as a damage, or as a magic user, I would go that way personally, but that's my opinion. Now, um, also I should mention there are many potions that can be used, of course. I have a ton of these uh, potions that I always keep on hand, including not just potions, but food as well. Uh, gives you the well-fed buff. Uh, and there are a ton of potions you can get. There are some that are specific to uh, magic users, which I actually don't have here. Um, but check out my potions guide if you want to know more about potions. There are a ton of potions, and you know, one or two potions can give you an edge. Ten potions can give you a huge, huge boost. So uh, I will be linking a series of my other guides in the description. My potions guide is definitely if you're if you're struggling, that can give you the edge just having the right potions. So keep that in mind. Um, and of course you know, besides armor or besides weapons and accessories, you are going to want new armor because your pre hard mode, hard mode armor is just not going to cut it anymore. So uh, the early uh, hard mode armors, kind of like the beginning of the game, um, there are ore based armors that you can get. But uh, in these cases, there are three different headpieces you can use. And there is one for each of these sets that is geared towards magic users. So um, You'll get either co Cobalt or Palladium as your initial one. You can get a bunch of that, put in, put together enough bars and craft an armor set out of that. That's your sort of right away, you know, easy to get sort of thing. Get the magic headgear um, and you can craft those uh, at your regular anvil. Now, once you have that, you're going to need uh, Cobalt or Palladium gear um, to get the next tier which is to mine your Oracalcum or Mithril, Mithril or Oracalcum. And once you get enough of that, you're, you're going to need to put together a new anvil. And from then, once you have your hard mode anvil, uh, Mithril or Oracalcum, this is an Oracalcum one, so it's pink, um, then you can craft the higher tiers, uh, again, your Mithril or Oracalcum armor, and then your Adamantite or Titanium. Now, um, if you are on one of the updated platforms, there is also an alternative or not the update platforms PC only for now actually 
you can also consider getting the forbidden armor. I'm not even going to get into how to craft that right now. Um, but it is a mixed magic and summoning set. It's sort of a trade-off. Uh, if you like summoner stuff as well, you might want to consider the forbidden armor if you're playing on PC or if that comes to other platforms later. Uh, but otherwise, um, you're going to want to get to at least, if you have titanium in your world, the titanium armor has a special shadow dodge buff that can be very useful in uh, avoiding damage. You may want to consider not only getting the titanium armor, but keeping it even after that. Otherwise, it's pretty well, you know, better ore equals better stats. Uh, and you'll want to move on to, you know, defeat the mechanical bosses. You can then do the hallowed armor. And uh, beyond that, um, once you've defeated all of them normally, um, you can get chlorophyte. Of course, if you are on 3DS or on the current mobile version, I think this will change. It is possible to get the Drax in Shadow Chess in the Underworld and chlor mine chlorophyte from uh, the beginning of hard mode, uh, which changes things a lot and you can skip straight to chlorophyte armor. But otherwise, you're going to have to defeat all the mechanical bosses. You can get your chlorophyte armor and that's going to be good stuff. Um, again, you know, that's going to give you a little bit higher defense, a little bit better stats uh, than most of those other sets. Again, there's a case to be made for potentially sticking with titanium if you've got titanium in your world, but let's not get into that too much. Um, another thing you're going to want to do, oh, and, and talking about the ingredients for those, uh, for cobalt and for mithril, for some reason, those two, uh, it's 45 bars that you need to craft those sets. Uh, the titanium set is 59 bars, and all those other sets, uh, palladium, orichalcum, uh, chlorophyte, uh, and adamantite, those are all 54 bars of the respective ore, and hallowed as well, actually. Um, 54 bars to craft those sets. So uh, there you go. That's all you need to know there. And as far as getting back into weapons and so on, um, you will likely want to craft a bookcase. So bookcase. You can actually craft a bookcase in pre-hard mode. It's just going to be uh, finally properly useful once you get into hard mode. Um, what you can do with this is uh, you will need to find your wizard NPC and you will only find him once you get into hard mode. He'll be deep underground uh, in the cavern layer and below. Uh, you'll find him tied up like Goblin Tinker and stuff. You get him and once you find him, he's this purple guy with the hat. Um, you can see him on my, my little thing there. Uh, he, he's a magician looking guy and he wears a purple outfit, but he will sell you a crystal ball and he will also sell you spell tomes and a harp. And these are all going to be useful things as a magic user. So crystal ball, first of all, um, you can set this down and you can just on PC, it's a right click. It's going to be your, your alternate fire. Essentially, um, that gives you a little buff. And this increases, uh, just as magic powers are increased, but it actually boosts a bunch of stuff. It gives you some extra mana, an extra 20 mana, and it also uh, boosts your, basically the power of your attacks as well. Uh, and decreases your mana usage as well. And it lasts for nine minutes, so it's a very useful little thing uh, if you're going into a boss fight or an event or something. It gives you that little edge as well. And besides that, um, you can use it to do some other stuff. But... Um, Crafting this bookcase, you'll need 10 books from the dungeon and 20 wood or other block types. You can actually craft a variety of different bookcases. You buy a spell tome from the wizard and you can use a spell tome to craft a few different weapons actually. So uh, ones I'm gonna mention, there's the crystal storm, which you can uh, craft whether you're in a cor corruption or crimson world. Um, you'll need a spell tome, 30 or 20 crystal shards, whether you're pre or post update and 15 souls of light. And that gives you one of these, Crystal Storm. You can see it's basically like rapid fire. Um, sort of your equivalent to the Mega Shark for magic users, if you're you know, more familiar with range. Uh, you can also craft a Golden Shower, which is if you're in a Crimson World, you can craft the Golden Shower by essentially the same recipe. It's a spell tome plus 30 or 20 ichor pre or post update uh, and 15 souls of night. And that will give you golden shower. And yes, let's all make jokes. And see, it's reasonably powerful on its own, but it inflicts the um, ichor debuff, which lowers your enemy defense. You can't really see that against the dummies, but that's very powerful. Um, 
it brings your enemy's defense down so that your attacks do more. So you can actually fire your golden shower at them, inflict that debuff, and then switch to another weapon, and that other weapon will do more damage as well for a few seconds, essentially. Um, if you're in a corruption world, on the other hand, you won't be able to do that, but you can make the Cursed Flames in its place. Uh, basically, again, same recipe, Spell Tome, plus 30 or 20 Cursed Flames that you get from uh, enemies in corruption areas, and 15 Souls of Night. Also, you know, pretty useful, pretty powerful. Uh, it won't remain as useful and powerful all through the game like the Golden Shower will because of that debuff that you can inflict on bosses forever. Um, but this is definitely powerful and useful as well. And as you can see, it inflicts the, the Cursed Inferno debuff, which just does some extra damage uh, for a few seconds as well. So those are some things that you can get uh, fairly early on. Also, um, Wizard also sells the Ice Rod and the Harp. So Ice Rod is a weapon itself, but it's also a weapon, uh, and I showed this in my other guide, but basically you can use it to create a barrier and then you can also shoot through that barrier. If there's no block where your cursor is, it will create temporary blocks there. Uh, if there is one already, it'll fire through that barrier. So it's an interesting weapon. You can even use it for building. Um, he will also sell a harp. Now the harp uh, by itself is just a, a music instrument, but once you've defeated the twins, you can then craft the magical harp, which is a powerful magic weapon by combining that harp with some crystal shards, souls of night and souls of sight. The numbers vary depending pre or post update, so I'm not gonna talk about it. Um, you'll need to do this at a hard mode anvil, but you can see that can be very, very uh, powerful and damaging. It does pierce, it also bounces, reflects off surfaces, uh, and the speed varies depending whether you fire close or far away. Um, it's a pretty powerful weapon for early hard mode and, uh, and can be extremely useful in certain situations. But talking about other weapons that you can get, you can get the magic, dam magic dagger for, uh, from uh, regular mimics. And that basically will fire as fast as you can click. And also, you know, it arcs downward eventually. It can pierce a little bit. Pierces one enemy, hits another. Uh, fairly powerful uh, early in hard mode as well. Uh, flower of Frost, which is basically an upgraded uh, flower of fire. Inflicts frost burn, which not too many bosses are uh, immune to, so that can be useful as well. Uh, that little burning sensation they're getting there. Um, that's a decent weapon. And uh, the Frost Staff, you can also get... Uh, so Flower of Frost is from Ice Mimics in the uh, Snow Biome. Uh, Frost Staff is from uh, several other enemies in the Underground uh, Snow Biome. And you can see another reasonably powerful weapon. Now the Nimbus Rod, actually this would be exactly the circumstance where you will get a Nimbus Rod. While it's raining, you'll have angry Nimbus enemies come and some of them will give you, uh, if you're lucky, a Nimbus Rod. It's a chance to get it from each one. And this is like that um, Crimson Rod weapon. It's basically an upgraded version of that. You can cast two of these clouds. As you can see, Piercing Rain does quite a bit of damage. That actually remains uh, powerful and useful through essentially most of the game. You can even use that in the celestial events against the lunar pillars. Um, it remains a useful weapon against slow moving, stationary, or uh, where you need to de defend a certain point. Like if you're doing the old one's army, it can be useful as well. Um, it's a weapon that, that can either help to damage enemies that happen to be passing through, uh, or do repeated da damage to enemies that are either you know passing through repeatedly or staying in you know one position. Uh, so Nimbus Rod is definitely useful. Um, you can also get the Poison Staff by going into underground um, the spider caves. You fight some black recluses, get some, get enough uh, spider fangs together, and you can make this poison staff. You can later upgrade that with some chlorophyte uh, to get the venom rod. You need some chlorophyte bars and your poison staff to get the venom rod, essentially an upgraded version. If you are on uh, one of the updated platforms, you have a few more uh, weapons that you can get early on as well. The sky fracture, which uh, involves um, combining your magic missile from pre-hard mode with uh, some extra stuff as well. Uh, the Shadow Flame Hex Doll. 
You get that from, uh, I believe it's Goblin Summoners um, in the Hard Mode Goblin Army. They're the, the one enemy that's added in Hard Mode Goblin Armies. Uh, Crystal Serpent from fishing in the Hallow at any level. Has that little explosive effect, which can be quite useful. And uh, most useful of the and the weapons that are exclusive to the updated platforms early on is the Meteor Staff. This is going to be really, really useful. Uh, there is an issue with uh, if you have a low cave, it won't come through. But if you have a high enough ceiling, boom. And uh, this is rapid fire. Has an area explosive effect. Only thing is, as you can see, it burns through mana really fast. So you're either going to um, need to have some really good gear to compensate for that, or um, yeah, I haven't even put on my. Uh, you know, say I have my chlorophyte set. Obviously, I'm going to have a lot more uh, mana, and the costs are going to be lower, and that. But it's still going to burn through it pretty quickly. So you may want to have a backup weapon even then to go along with it. But moving along from all that stuff, um, at this point, uh, roughly this point, after you've defeated all the mechanical bosses, if you're on one of the updated platforms, you can finally craft that Avenger emblem and then combine that with the Celestial Magnet. And, you know, like I was talking about earlier there, um, you'll want to do that before you go and fight Plantera. You're going to want your Sorcerer emblem, your Celestial emblem. Uh, you might want to keep your Magic Cuffs for now. Again, the, the Mana Flower is kind of optional if you want to risk... Uh, you know, that debuff, it will keep uh, your mana full, but uh, you may end up reducing your damage as a result. And you can probably keep your wings for now. So that's going to kind of get you ready for Plantera. There's, uh, again, I kind of talked about if you're fighting in a big enough arena, you might want to use the, the Meteor Staff. Um, there's a variety of these that you can use against Plantera. Uh, Venom Staff is pretty pretty effective. Uh, that Golden Shower, if you have it, is definitely going to be useful. Magical Harp, um, Magic Dagger, and so on. So uh, once you've defeated Plantera, um, Plantera will drop. There's a certain chance to drop a variety of things, uh, but those include the Nettle Burst weapon, the Wasp Gun, and the Leaf Floor. I haven't actually put those in here because they're not super great weapons. They are going to be upgrades for you. Um, but they're not super great. I showed those in my, my other magic guides anyway. Uh, but at this point, you can also get the rainbow gun from the hallowed chest. Uh, Plant Arrow is not going to drop this, but you can use your hallowed key if you have one or your hallowed key mold to make a hallowed key and so on. Uh, open the hallowed chest, get your rainbow gun. And this is another one of those things, uh, kind of like the Nimbus Rod, that you can use to sort of guard a spot and do a whole bunch of damage to anything that passes through this rainbow. Uh, stop that so you don't have to listen to it um, but that is going to be very useful if you are on one of the updated platforms you can also get the toxic flask from the Dr. Manfly during solar eclipses uh, he only appears after you defeated Plantera on the updated platforms again powerful useful weapon uh, this one does use a fair bit of mana if you spam it too much but uh, as you can see nice area effect there can be very useful as well. And there's a whole series of weapons um, that you can get in the dungeon. Uh, but first, let's talk about once you've defeated Plantera, you have a new armor set available, and that is the Spectre set. So I'm just going to swap that in. Um, you have the option of the mask to maximize your damage output and the hood, which will give you special healing powers, which makes this potentially very, um, very, very powerful. You're definitely going to want to get your Spectre armor. Uh, so basically to do that, you are going to need, uh, before the update, it's 54 chlorophyte bars and 54 ectoplasm. Since the update, you need to actually combine uh, the chlorophyte bars with ectoplasm at the forge to make 54 specter bars. Uh, and ultimately, same thing, you still make the, the specter armor set. Um, now think about this, you may want to even keep both of your uh, head pieces handy because what you can do and this is maybe a little easier on PC I'm not sure you can keep it in your inventory uh, on PC you can simply right click to switch uh, to equip each one so you can switch in your hood when you need to heal and then switch in your mask to boost your down damage um, before the update the uh, specter hood is actually arguably like really overpowered they took they nerfed it big time in the update um, but it's still a good choice if you need healing. Uh, if you tend to take damage, you still might want to go with that hood. Uh, if you tend to be able to avoid damage, you might want to go with the mask and maximize your damage instead. 
Um, but that that hood can keep you alive in you know major fights, major situations. Uh, so it's definitely something you want to consider. And uh, yeah, even post update with the nerfing, it's still a pretty good choice um, for healing purposes. Um, also on the old gen on on old gen consoles, 3DS, and the current mobile version. Again, this will probably change when the update comes to mobile, uh, but for the others, it'll remain the same. Uh, spectral armor. So there's Spectre armor and there's Spectral armor. Uh, spectral armor is available only on those platforms. It is not available on any of the updated platforms. Um, it's good for mana conservation um, and having extra mana and damage output, uh, but you need to defeat Okram to get it. Uh, he will also sometimes drop pieces of it directly. Uh, if you need to craft it, it's you, need, you actually need the first four tiers of hard mode armor, all the ore base set, um, as well as uh, Souls of Fright and Souls of Blight. So I'm not going to get too far into that, but that is an alternative on those platforms. Um, and it's a viable alternative. It's, it's debatable as well. Uh, once you've defeated Plantera, though, there are also some other uh, weapons available in the dungeon, particularly. Um, there are some new enemies that appear in the dungeon after defeating Plantera, and they can drop a series of weapons. These are available all platforms. So there's the Spectre Staff, uh, which, I mean, it doesn't look too impressive. It, it's just firing, you know, it's sort of like those old uh, pre-hard mode um, or in gem staffs, but it does actually, you know, obviously has upgraded damage compared to those. It does pretty high damage, and these are actually homing. Uh, these homing shots are is what makes it, you know, reasonably useful. So if I bring some of these guys out, it's going to home in on them pretty quickly. So that's going to be useful in some situations. And uh, other options is shadow beam staff. This is like an instant hit death ray kind of a situation and as you can see it also bounces off blocks uh, the damage does decrease as it reflects a bit um, but it, it's not a huge deal for that uh, and that sort of instant hit thing can be very useful against fast moving enemies uh, the reflection can be useful in enclosed spaces so shadow beam staff is definitely a good one um, inferno fork obviously powerful <laughs> nice area effect uh, the blast itself, like the initial hit, does a good amount of damage, but that area effect thing is is what you know causes a whole series of hits and does a lot more damage. And uh, finally, the magnet sphere. Um, this is, you know, it looks harmless, right? It looks harmless, but it's basically like the BFG if you're familiar with Doom. These little spheres fly out and they shoot you know, kind of like death rays at anything that's nearby. So it's actually a very powerful weapon, pretty well known for that. Uh, so those are four additional good weapons um, that you're probably wanna, gonna wanna get uh, any or all of those at that point. After you've defeated Plantaria, you'll be preparing to fight the Golem and you're probably gonna want those. I would say the Inferno Fort can be really good against the Golem, um, but it, uh, especially first stage. Uh, anyway, um, take your pick there's there's lots of weapons to choose from at that point of course you got your meteor staff and, and some of these others as well uh, will be very useful against golem too once you've defeated the golem you now have a couple of extra accessories that are available to you so uh, you can make another avenger emblem if you or, or if you still have one available you can use it combine it um, with the eye of the golem to make the destroyer emblem as you can see 10 percent increased damage eight percent increased critical strike chance Personally, I'd probably swap that in at this point for one of these, either the Magic Cuffs or the Mana Flower. I'd probably put that in. You can also get either Celestial Stone or Celestial Shell. If you're pre-update, you can get the Celestial Stone. Since the update, you can take that one stage further and make the Celestial Shell. You're definitely going to want that. I would actually prioritize that over the Destroyer Emblem. Again, I tend to maximize for uh, damage output, so I've got all of these at this point. Um, that's the way that I would personally go, but uh, you might care more about mana and stuff, so you might want to keep these. That's up to you. Um, and once you've defeated Golem and you've got that stuff, you might want to start thinking about some of the events and uh, other things. So there's the Pumpkin Moon, of course, and the Bat Scepter that you get from the Pumpkin in the Pumpkin Moon. I'm a fan of this, personally. Uh, again, doesn't look like a whole lot but it is pretty rapid fire and these bats are homing bats. So that makes this really useful for taking on events. 
they will home in. They do fly a certain distance before they home in. Um, but homing bats, it, it's a really rapid fire um, homing weapon that can be very useful. I'm a big fan of that. And pumpkin moon is arguably easier than the frost moon. So you might want to do that first and then you can use um, that bat scepter against all those other enemies. Uh, you can take on the frost moon. You can get the razor pine, which of course is pretty legendary in Terraria circles. Very rapid fire um, kind of machine gun kind of situation. Uh, this was actually nerfed slightly. Uh, the razor pine you get from Everscream and the frost moon. Um, they lowered the damage a little bit with the update, but it's still really powerful. It's it's like crazy powerful pre-update, and it's still really powerful even since the update. So you'll probably uh, definitely want to get one of those. Uh, also, the Blizzard Staff. This is more situational. Um, this is going to be useful. Like If you're on one of the updated platforms, you have the Martian Madness event. Uh, Blizzard Staff is going to be really useful against the Martian Saucers because you can just sit in a box or under a roof and uh, fire down at them without going outside. <laughs> so that's going to be really useful in that situation. Um, some others as well, of course. And also, uh, you'll want to think about fighting Duke Fishron. And personally, I think the, the Bat Scepter and the, the uh, Razor Pine as well, those are really good options for fighting Duke Fishron because Duke Fishron moves really fast, so you need something that can hit him fast. Um, Magnet Spheres might be a good option as well. But when you kill Duke Fisher on you have one in five chance of getting a couple of really awesome weapons as well. The bubble gun. This is basically short range. Like you can't really hit people for, with it from a long range, but up in close range, you can see it does massive, massive damage. So it's a very powerful weapon. Uh, and it's a one in five chance to get that or the razor blade typhoon, which is one of these legendary uh, weapons. You know, it looks powerful enough like that, but the thing is, not only is it very rapid fire, it's homing as well. So, um, Razor Blade Typhoon, I'm going to say you definitely want to get that. And uh, if you're on a pre-update platform, um, that's about where things end for you. <laughs> um, you're you're going to be rocking your uh, Spectre armor probably. Uh, maybe you chose Spectral, but you're going to be rocking one of those. That's your end game armor. Um, you're going to be rocking these kind of weapons, which are very powerful. Um, and you've got all these accessories, which also, uh, you know, very powerful. You're doing, you're doing well. But on the updated platforms, you can, of course, go a little further. There's a little more content to cover. Um, so there are two weapons you can get from the Martian Madness event, which is exclusive to the updated platforms. Now, these events and these bosses post Golem, uh, you can actually do these in any order. So you may want to do them. You may want to do them in the order I talked about them. You might want to do Martian Madness, you know, before uh, Duke Fishron. That's up to you. Uh, but Martian Madness, you can get these two other weapons: the laser machine gun, which basically has a wind up sort of like a Gatling gun, and as you can see, it uh, starts burning through a lot of mana as it winds up. It's a powerful weapon. It's sort of like a um, laser rifle, but, you know, upgraded. There's also the charge blaster cannon, which you can either, uh, you can charge that up a lot and get this massive beam, or you can just, you know, single shot it. It's kind of like Mega Man. Uh, it's basically a nod to the Mega Man weapon. It has actually three fire modes, so there's single fire, there's short charge, and then there's that long charge that gives you the massive beam. Uh, so obviously that's quite powerful. And um, at this stage as well, you may want to consider uh, swapping out your wings actually, because uh, if you're playing an expert, uh, again, ex expert is exclusive to the updated platforms, but in expert mode, Duke Fishron, who's not, uh, but only in expert mode, so this is uh, exclusive to the updated platforms. You can get the Shrimpy Truffle, uh, which gives you the cute Fishron mount, uh, which is a flying mount, or you can get the Cosmic Car Key from uh, the Flying Saucer in the Martian Madness event. Either way, um, you can use a mount in place of your wings, and that frees up a spot for an extra accessory. So again, I like to maximize for damage. I'm going to stick my... Uh, Avenger emblem in that spot. Again, if you're on the updated platforms, uh, you can have, or if you're an expert, specifically on the updated platforms, you'll have one more spot. So, you know, you'll have space for one more item there as well. Uh, but 
Uh, you can stack all of these emblems and those will all of those damage boosts will uh, build on each other and that gives you huge, huge power. Um, and at that point, you really don't need your wings if you have a mount um, that flies. So, so that gives you an extra spot uh, and you don't really need your wings. You can free up the spot and use it for something else. Maximize your damage or maximize your mana. Uh, another event that uh, actually is PC only so far, hopefully it'll come to some of the rest of you later, is the Old Ones Army event. And from that, you can get uh, a very powerful magic weapon as well, the Betsy's Wrath. If you do the Tier 3 version of the event, which is only after you defeated Golem, at the end of that you fight Betsy, and you can get this Betsy's Wrath. I believe that's a chance as well. Um, besides being reasonably powerful on its own, as you can see, it does quite a bit of damage, uh, it inflicts this debuff. That, that's why they have those marks on them. Um, that actually reduces uh, your enemy defense by twice as much, I think it is, compared to the Golden Shower. And you can actually use the Golden Shower and this and massively reduce your enemy defense. That's going to be hugely, hugely powerful against uh, bosses particularly. And uh, so that's going to be a huge, huge advantage. Um, so that's something that, that I would recommend. Again, if you're struggling particularly, that powerful debuff is, is going to give you a huge edge against those bosses. And you can do that, of course, before fighting, say, Duke Fishron, bring his defense down and uh, give you a huge advantage there. Again, that's so far PC only, the Old Ones Army and the, that particular uh, item as well. But all those things between Golem and now aside, uh, next place you're going to go is you're going to fight the Lunatic Cultist. And... Um, again, this is all update exclusive. You'll defeat the Lunatic Cultist. You might want to use Razorblade Typhoon. Uh, would be definitely a choice that I would make there. Uh, Bat Scepter could work as well. Um, or if your aim is good, Razor Pine. Uh, he does move quickly. That kind of thing. Um, defeat the Lunatic Cultist, and uh, then you are going to get into the Celestial Events, the Lunar Events. At that point, uh, you will need to fight the lunar pillars and I would suggest going for the nebula pillar first because the nebula pillar is the magic pillar and you're going to get some stuff there that you can use against the other ones so uh, when you defeat the nebula pillar you will get nebula fragments you can use those nebula fragments to craft both the nebula blaze and the nebula arcanum uh, you may only get enough fragments to craft one of them so choose wisely uh, they're both good weapons though both very good weapons um, and in fact, they're both homing weapons. So the Nebula Blaze is basically, uh, it does not pierce, it just hit, well, hits once. Uh, but it does do a large amount of damage and it homes in and it moves quickly. So against fast moving enemies, that's going to be useful. That'll be useful against all those enemies you're fighting um, to break down the shields of the pillars. That's going to be quite powerful there. But uh, Nebula Arcanum will, will do very nicely as well. Also a homing weapon, moves more slowly, but has this explosion uh, when it hits, which um, that's going to be probably better against single targets because it's going to uh, hit multiple times, uh, but also against, you know, dense crowds. It'll hit more than one of them at a time. Uh, so personally, that might be my preference, but it kind of depends. Uh, depends on what you're fighting exactly, which one of those is going to be better. So you'll need 18 fragments at your Ancient Manipulator. Ancient Manipulator is dropped by the Lunatic Cultist. The fragments are dropped by the Nebula Pillar. Um, so 18 fragments to craft either one of those. If you're lucky and get enough, you can craft both with 36. Uh, otherwise, you may need to choose between them your first run through. Either one will actually work pretty well against the Moon Lord and against the, the Pillar events themselves. So... Um, not even going to make a recommendation there, but... Uh, you're going to go through the other pillars and then you're going to, of course, fight the Moon Lord. Now, when you defeat the Moon Lord, uh, you have a chance of getting one of the two most powerful magic weapons in the game. So one is the Lunar Flare. Extremely powerful death from above type situation. And uh, the other is the Last Prism. So Lunar Flare is kind of like an upgraded version of the Blizzard Staff, arguably, and the Meteor Staff as well, for that matter. Um, very powerful, death from above, point where you want to kill. Uh, it passes through blocks more easily, um, basically hits only near the cursor, so 
Uh, it has advantages besides its massive damage output. And of course, the last prism is very, very uh, well-known, legendary, and so on. I'm going to want that. <laughs> it does massive, massive damage. It starts out with six beams, concentrates gradually into one, and burns through mana like you wouldn't believe. So that's the only downside to it. Um, you will want to get the best equipment that you can get. And of course, uh, each of those is a one in nine chance to drop from Moon Lord. If you don't get it the first time, just keep killing, killing you some Moon Lords. Um, and you can go through the Lunar Events and, and get all the Nebula Fragments as well. You're going to need those uh, anyway because you're going to need another 45 Nebula Fragments and 36 Luminite Bars from the Moon Lord. Uh, to get that much Luminite, you're going to need to defeat the Moon Lord at least twice. But if you get 45 Nebula Fragments and 36 Luminite Bars, you can go to your Ancient Manipulator and get the ultimate Magic Armor set, which is, as far as I'm concerned, without doubt, uh, there, there's some debate, but um, I think it's, it's pretty clear, the Nebula Armor set. And uh, this armor set's pretty amazing. Besides the stat boosts, which are huge, um, it gives you huge increases to your magic damage in particular, uh, increases your critical strike chance quite a bit as well, even increases your movement speed. Um, but it also, when you kill enemies with it, you get these little boosters which uh, give you huge, huge boosts. And they basically have um, multi-level boosts as well. And there we go. I finally got one there. Um, there's sort of three tiers to these boosts. So the more of these little items you pick up, and by the way, those um, the Celestial Emblem and the Celestial Cuffs and the Celestial Magnet will pick these up from a greater distance for you as well, along with the, the actual Mana Stars and stuff. Um, when you level up those boosts, you, you get uh, Life Generation, uh, Damage Boost, and Mana Regeneration. And um, those boosts can can get so huge. So if you're fighting like an invasion event or you're fighting a boss, um, those boosts can actually heal you and rejuvenate your mana and increase your damage output so much that like it, it's it's quite ridiculous actually. So that is um, the ultimate set, and those are kind of the ultimate weapons. And it is just about nighttime, and you know what I'm gonna do. I'm going to fight the Moon Lord. So give me a sec to, to put my gear together and we'll be right back fighting the Moon Lord. All right, are we ready for this? I'm going to get on my mount. I'm going to apply all my buffs. We're going to fight us the Moon Lord. Uh, so I'm going to show you a whole variety of uh, weapons here. Um, honestly, my biggest concern is actually that he's going to die too fast to show you them all, but, <laughs> but let's see how it goes. And meanwhile, we can kill a few of these guys and get a few of those nebula boosts going. Well, no, that's going to run out before he even gets here. But um, yeah, so I'm going to show you the Bat Scepter, the Razor Pine, uh, Razor Blade Typhoon, uh, the Laser Machine Gun, Charged Blaster Cannon, Nebula Blaze, Nebula Arcanum, Lunar Flare, and of course, the Last Prism. I'm a big fan of the homing bats, personally, but uh, at this stage of the game, you might want something a little better. <laughs> They're going to be really good against uh, Frost Moon, Pumpkin Moon, um, Martian Madness other than the Saucer. I guess even for Saucer, you could fire them out the side and they'd curve around. So, bats. Um, main problem is they don't fly all that fast. At least, I guess, direction that I'm flying, they don't fly fast enough. So that, you know, that's an issue. So let's break out the Razor Pine. There's a reason that people are a fan of that. There you go. Uh, Razor Pine is actually pretty decent against the Moon Lord. Uh, but I bet the Razor Blade Typhoon is going to be better. Santa has left us. Christmas is over. Oh yeah, Razor Blade Typhoon mixing it up quite well. Uh, laser Machine Gun it does need time to charge. That's the main problem with that. 
just really mess up my herb farm. <laughs> and uh, let's try the charged blaster cannon. Now, one thing about this, oh, yeah, I can't choose when to actually let it go. That's going to be the main problem with that. But yeah, if I can get that beam on there, that's pretty good. It doesn't let you uh, change the direction of it, so that's a bit of a problem. Okay, you know what? I'm going to need to quickly go back to my nurse. Heal up. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't use the most powerful weapons right away. Alright, mana potion. Alright, well... That was less good, but um, yeah, I guess we should do that one more time with the powerful weapons because we'll survive a lot better that way. And here we go. So Nebula Blaze. Strikes pretty fast. Nebula Arcanum. main problem here is uh, still a mana issue. If I were to get the uh, boost from the nebula armor going well enough, that might be one place where um, having the Nature's gift, uh, the mana flower. Might make the difference, even though, even with the potion sickness buff, you know. I had tried that before, and actually, you know, you can have such huge damage output. So let's do the Lunar Flare. I'm just going to keep using potions, even though it's going to decrease my... Uh, Damage output. So it, it's not easy to aim with that, um, but the last prism, of course, is where things get really interesting. <laughs> can swing this around, unlike the uh, equivalent from the Martian Madness event. And yeah, Last Prism is really where it's at. Even with Potion Sickness. This is why they call the mage the glass cannon, because basically you just need to do damage so fast that it doesn't matter that you're dying. <laughs> and that's how you kill the moon lord. So, boom. Last prism to the chest and moon lord is dead. So hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.